A lot of new information for the 1.3 patch has come out over the past couple of days. We of course have the underground, there will be a new incursion, there will be new gear sets, new weapons, and of course the weapon balance will become of effect. But um, since all this information is pretty much spread out across so many different videos from so many different YouTubers, news sites, and even Twitch past broadcasts, I thought it was a good idea to sum it up today uh, and let you know what you can expect from the 1.3 patch. So um, let's begin. The biggest addition to the game in the underground expansion is, well, the underground. And like many people thought, this expansion will not just add more subplay entrances and more underground areas both in the PvE world and in the Dark Zone. The underground will be an instance completely separate from the rest of the game. It seems that from inside of the base of operations you'll be able to take an elevator down that will take you into this lobby. This lobby in itself is a new wing for the base and completing activities in the underground will unlock different features for this wing. This lobby also serves as a preparation room for going into the underground. There will be a table in the middle where you will have to choose the difficulty which is either normal, hard, challenge mode or heroic. Um, and by the way, it has been confirmed that these difficulties will just like with the rest of the game determine how much HP the enemies have and how much damage that they do. However, the heroic mode will not make the enemies any stronger from challenge mode, it will just make them a lot more aggressive. After choosing the difficulty, you will have to select how many phases you want to play. A phase 1 operation means that you can just complete one mission. A phase 2 operation is two missions and a phase 3, well that's, uh, that's for three missions. From what I know and from what I've seen, they actually are three separate missions and not just one bigger mission if you were to select the three-phase one. The only reason to pick a three-phase operation is to save you a little bit of time if you're going to do multiple ones in a row anyway. Now last up for the preparation screen, there are these directives, which act as mission modifiers and are very similar to the skulls from the Halo games if you've ever played those. Basically, they make it just a little bit more difficult to complete an underground mission by adding in new rules. Fog of War, for instance, removes the minimap, Waste Not, Want Not gives you a lower starting ammo, and you will lose all the rounds left over in a magazine if you reload before the magazine is completely empty. Mad Skills put both skills on cooldown if you're only using one of them, so let's say if you're running with the first 8 in the poles and you use the poles, then the first 8 will also be on cooldown. And using a signature skill will put the signature skill of your teammates on cooldown as well, so some coordination is going to be required there. Special Forces allows enemies to use fire and explosive ammo. And last up, Sickness, which uh, makes it so that health above the last health segment will continuously be drained. So, you know, you have a permanent damage over time on your character. You can activate all of them at the same time or you can leave them disabled. Naturally, the more difficult you make it for yourself, the better the rewards will be. We know for sure that you get more underground experience when these are enabled and you complete a mission, but we don't actually know yet if the loot is better as well. Activating these directives come at a price, however. You will need to get directive intel first, which is a new form of currency, much like the intel that you gather for high value targets. This intel can be acquired in the underground through completing missions, but also appear in underground caches, which are exactly the same as Dark Zone caches, except with these you can get intel instead of the DZ funds and the div tech. But um, I just mentioned that you get experience for completing an underground mission. Now as I said, this isn't just normal experience because everybody is already pretty much level 30 so that would be useless. But when you go into the underground you will get a separate underground rank, much like the Dark Zone rank. And completing certain actions will also grant you with underground experience. Now this underground rank will work in a very similar way that the Dark Zone rank does. Items and blueprints at certain shops will be locked away behind having a certain underground rank. Which, by the way, you're gonna have to buy those blueprints with Phoenix credit, so keep those in the pocket just for now. But moving aside from the mechanics, the difficulties and the rules that you have to the underground missions, um, what are you actually going to do? Well, after setting up all the rules in the initial room, you have to walk through this decontamination tent uh, and go up to the train rails. Press the action button to load up the mission and you're off to a start. Once in the underground, you'll be tasked with uh, investigating an area or taking down a boss that you have to find first. Uh, pretty much the usual mission stuff. But the cool thing about these underground missions is, is that they are procedurally generated in terms of environment, enemies, objectives and that sort of stuff. So unless you're grinding the game for days and days and days on end, you will never really see the same mission twice. And uh, it should stay fresh for uh, quite a long time. I've also seen some new enemy devices, such as this thing that disrupts you once you get too close to it. So maybe we'll see some new gameplay mechanics as well, which I'm quite looking forward to. 
And because this is the first major expansion, you can also expect to see more weapons, more new gear sets, and a power increase for the players. It seems that item level 33 items will be introduced, and that means gear score 229 weapons and gear score 268 gear set items. These higher level items can roll main stats between 622 and 759, which is a lot higher than the current ranges that uh, the 240 gear pieces have. I'm not too excited about the gear sets themselves though. Uh, the four that have been revealed so far are the Reclaimer, which gives you 100% support station healing speed, 50% consumable duration, and uh, the four piece applies to consumable that you use to the entire team. So whenever you use a fire bullet or an explosive round, the whole team gets it. Then there's the Fire Crest, which gives you 3 extra incendiary ammo, 100% reload speed. And if you kill a target that's on fire, you will get fire bullets for 10 seconds. Then we have the Blind Set, which uh, grants you 100% extra critical hit damage on a pulse, makes you immune to the Blind Death effect, and every time that you kill a target, it creates a flashbang effect on that location. One thing that I noticed about this gear set as well is that it also has a fitting weapon called the Blind System Battle Rifle. This weapon has a unique talent where it increases your damage by 100% versus blinded targets, which of course synergizes very well with the whole set. Uh, and then last on the list we have Frontline, which gives you 300% extra ballistic shield health, 100% ballistic shield damage resistance, and allows you to use an SMG in combination with the shield. Unfortunately, this set has uh, been confirmed not to make it in the 1.3 patch despite it being shown in the footage. So why is it that I'm not very excited for these sets? Um, now, I know it's a little bit too early to say whether these gear sets are going to be good or they're going to be bad for the game. Not to mention that uh, these may not even be all of the sets and that any of these values are still subject to change between now and the 28th of June. But when looking at these gear sets, I just can't help but feel that Massive designed these purely for the PvE aspect of the game and didn't really think about what would happen to the PvP. With infinite fire ammo, explosive rounds for everyone at all times and so much extra damage on the blinds and the pulses, I really think that PvP will become a very hot mess um, I know that a lot of people dislike the current tank meta, and I'd have to agree that this is not a fun experience either, despite me running a tank station build myself. But I can't really imagine these newer gear sets resulting in a fun experience either. What concerns me more though, is uh, the experience for the players that will not be buying the 1.3 update. As far as I know, the players that will not be getting the update will still be able to play with the players that did get the expansion. It is just that when you're playing together with them in a group, uh, the players will not be able to start any of the underground missions together. That is of course because one of the players does not have the update, so he cannot play it. But what I'm a little bit worried about is what happens if a few of these guys with the 1.3 gear sets go into the dark zone and meet the players that had no interest in the new expansion and thus are unable to acquire the new gear sets because, you know, they don't have the expansion, so they're not gonna get the gear sets. I think in a fair fight that uh, those players that didn't get the expansion will not stand a chance uh, seeing how incredibly powerful these new gear sets are in comparison. I mean, even the final measure cannot save you from 3 or 4 M44s with explosive and fire rounds. And let's say that the opposite happens and there's a system put into place that makes it impossible to play with your friends that bought the DLC if you don't have the DLC, then you will be separating the player base into half, which also isn't a very good thing. I certainly do not hope that this will become a pay to win scenario. And a last up regarding the new gear and the new weapons, uh, it's worth noting that some changes will be made in order to make some weapons more effective in some situations. SMGs are getting a very small buff because instead of the 20 to 25% crit chance, uh, they will now be receiving a 35 to 40 crit damage boost as a base. This means that if you're running with a maxed out pulse and you just have 20% of crit hit chance bonuses on your gear, you will be hitting the critical hit chance cap, but you will also be doing a lot more damage with your crits because of the base critical hit damage boost on your SMG. I guess the only effect this will have is on the PvP, where players are of course able to use the conceal and then avoid the 40% crit chance from the pulse. The snipers in the game remain unchanged, they have the added headshot damage. The LMGs will now do 30% extra damage to targets out of cover. Shotguns will have an increased chance to stagger enemies. Now, uh, if you don't know what stagger is, it is that little knockback that you get when shooting enemies or when the turrets are shooting at you. You know when it happens because the enemies will drop the grenades or you won't be able to move and that kind of stuff. But it is noted that the stagger only works versus NPCs, so not versus other players in the dark zone. And then last up, assault rifles do extra damage versus armor. Basically when you see those white bars above the enemy health bars, that means that they have armor and as long as you're 
targeting them, you will be doing more damage. This also only works versus NPCs. It does nothing versus other players. I want to make that very clear. And even though I kind of like the bonuses and I don't think it's a bad change at all, I really think that uh, just like with the gear sets, these changes are really focused on the PvE part of the game and they kind of left the PvP for what it is, just a side, didn't really do anything with it and uh, that's not something I'm too happy with. The very last thing coming with this patch is a new incursion called Dragon's Nest. In this incursion you will be fighting the cleaners and instead of just one boss, you will be taking it up against four cleaner heavies. Two of which have flamethrowers and the other two have machine guns. The incursion itself will take place in Hell's Kitchen, which was first showcased in a special report for the 1.2 patch. And just like with the LMB in Falcon Lost uh, that have their special drones, it was said that the cleaners will also have their own special toys, but they haven't announced what those are yet, so be ready for a surprise. Some of the missions in the game will also receive a challenge mode, and the missions that already had a challenge mode will now get the heroic difficulty, which again, uh, it's the same enemies, they're just a lot more aggressive. And I think that that all sums it up pretty well. Um, in short, we have randomly generated underground missions with modifiers to make it more difficult. We have new weapons with new talents. We have new gear sets. And we have a new incursion with higher difficulty for existing content. Now, because I myself did not go to E3 this year, uh, I gathered some footage around from several other YouTubers such as Erex, Skillup, Boomslang and Morrigan, as well as several Twitch channels such as the official Twitch one and the Division Game one. All of those sources will be linked down below in the description if you want to check them out for yourself. As always, I will see you guys later, or like they say, in the Netherlands. See you later!